Hello friends, welcome to HEYS. How are you? I hope you are doing well. So friends, as you know that on our channel, we are covering the syllabus of UPSC civil services and for that purpose, we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So currently, we have 10 series that target your prelims and one series that target your mains. So in these prelim series, what we do, we daily cover 10 questions of a particular topic and in this way, we will cover them till 31st May. So at least two topics are covered daily and 10 topic, uh, ten questions of, of one topic are covered and uh, is co are covered in, in this manner, uh, two topics per day amounts to 20 M MCQs daily. So we cover 20 MCQs daily and we will continue to do so till 31st May. So why the date chosen has been 31st May? Because on 2nd June is your prelims of UPSC CSE 2019 and we will end this series only one day before your prelims exam. So let's start our discussion. Uh, today is the uh, discussion about environment and ecology and it is lecture number 50. So let's see what are the questions today. First is consider the following statements about a bird species. Uh, uh, we have to consider certain uh, statements about a bird species and we have to tell about which bird we, bird we are talking about in the statements. First, it is listed as vulnerable in the IUCN red list of threatened species. Uh, second, it is endemic to Central Asia. Third, illegal trade is the biggest threat to this species due to which it has been covered under sites. Uh, fourth is it is highly sought after pet due to its melodious call. So let uh, we have to choose which of the following is uh, is the is the uh, is the bird that we are talking about in these statements. A coina, B common minor, um, C black neck crane, D green munia. So let me tell you friends that the answer is green munia. So it is vulnerable and also it is endemic to central India and it is the, the illegal trade is, is, is the biggest threat to it and, and it, is, it has been covered under the sites and also it features in the, in the Schedule 4 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So the, this is the green munia. So here is the justification. So they have highly melodious voice. I have told you, and they are mainly found in Central Asia, India, India, and they are also part of Schedule Schedule Four in Wildlife Protection Act, 1972, making their hunting, trapping, or trade illegal and a punishable offense. So let's move on to the second question. The second question is: The Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve is known to host which of the following important species? One dugong, second the saltwater crocodile, third great Indian hornbill. So which of the following statements uh, are, are correct? We have to choose. So let me tell you friends that the great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve hosts only dugong and saltwater crocodile. So not not great Indian hornbill. It, it is actually the the uh, we can, uh, there, there is there, there there is a hornbill there, but it is not great Indian hornbill. It is uh, I, I am not able to recall its name, but it is given in the explanation. So only first two are are found in this Nico great Nicobar biosphere reserve the gong and saltwater crocodile and uh, this is uh, one and two so the one and two only are found so a option is correct so actually the 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 these these region uh, this this narcondom horn hornbill is found in Andaman and Nicobar so this is about your second question so let's move on to the third question third question is all important rivers and streams of Garo Hills region rise from the mountain range located in the protected area the protected area also hosts the Nongkhailam Wildlife Sanctuary and Balpakram, Bal, Balpakram National Park other than hosting the Huluk given the only ape species of India it is so we have to tell we about uh, which place we are talking about so it is a basically protected area and we have to tell uh, that which of the following is that uh, that a no, no Creek national park and uh, b namdhapa reserve c dachigam reserve d manas biosphere reserve so let me tell you friends uh, that uh, here the correct answer would, would be is no Creek national park so no Creek national park is the park that is a protected so obviously it is a protected area and host nongkailam wildlife sanctuary and balpakram national park and also has a hollow gibbon the only ho uh, ape species of india so it is uh, the uh, it is basically the the, the, uh, the region from which the main rivers and streams of garo hills rise uh, so this the answer is a so here is the explanation so i have already told you in detail so unesco added this national park to its list of biosphere reserves in 2019 so let's move on to the fourth question the fourth question is consider the following statements about plant pathogens First, bacteria as well as fungi can cause diseases in plants. Second, pathogens can affect only affect plant only plants only after transmitting itself from root to the shoots. Third, a pathogen cannot be transmitted to plant by the medium of water. So we have to choose which of the following is correct. So let me tell you, friend, that the first statement is correct. Yes, bacteria as well as fungi both are responsible for causing diseases in plants. But let me tell you that, friend, second statement is not correct. Why it is not correct? Because uh, pathogens can it is not necessary for pathogens to transmit through root through roots only. The pathogens can 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 affect plants from different parts it is not necessary they can affect a particular leaf the, the leaf portion or the stem portion so it is not necessary that they transfer them that uh, they transmit themselves from 
uh, route to the shoot. So regarding third statement, third statement is also wrong because pathogens can be transmitted by, by the medium of water also, soil also and air also. So this is not correct. So only first statement is correct. So the answer will be A, that is one only. So here is, let's see what is the solution. So yes, A is the answer. So pathogens can uh, transmit themselves through all the modes that is air, water and soil. So let's move on to the fifth question. Uh, fifth question is consider the following about the earth summit so we have been asked uh, to consider the certain statements about the earth summit uh, first it was convened for the first time in 1972 after the publication of the limits to growth thesis second it is con convened each year to address urgent environmental protection and uh, socio-economic development and the, at the global level so we have to choose the correct statement so let me tell you friends that uh, both the statements are incorrect because earth summit uh, was not uh, it was not held for the first time in 1972 it was held in 1992 in rio de janeiro so it was de the decision was taken there to uh, to address the urgent environmental protection and socio-economic development at the global level Level. But let me tell you, friends, that it is not convened every year. Uh, the the recent uh, recent uh, Earth Summit that have happened that took place it was in 2012, and uh, and there are only uh, until now there there have been uh, there been there have been only two Earth Summits. Uh, so that uh, they, that that were conducted in 19 to, 1992 and 2012. So second statement is also wrong. So the solution is D. That is none. So justification is here. And so in 1992, the Earth, uh, this Earth Summit held for the first time in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So first uh, international Earth Summit uh, was held. It was basically to address the urgent problems of environment protection and socio-economic development at the global level. So one is wrong. And the assembled leaders uh, signed the Declaration on Global Climate Change and Biological Diversity. So Earth Summit 2012 was held 20 years after the 1992 summit. So second to, second statement is also wrong. So let's move on to the sixth question. The sixth question is: It is the state animal of Manipur and uh, found in Kibul Lanjao National Park. It is seen over the floating uh, biomass, lo locally called Fumdi. The animal is. So friends, we have been asked to choose which of the following animals is talked about. So if you know the state animal of uh, of of Manipur, then it would be easy for you to uh, to judge it. So basically, let me tell you that the answer is Sangai. So Sangai is basically uh, an, uh, the, the, the animal which is state animal of Manipur. So it, it, it appears like uh, like uh, it, it, it has it it appears like a deer. So it is a uh, in, in fact it is a classification of deer. So it is uh, it is largely seen over the floating biomass so uh, lo lo locally called uh, the Fumdi. So the animal is Sangai. Is, uh, Sangai. So it is state animal of Manipur. Please remember this and it is important because this Kimbu Lamjau National Park is the only national only floating park uh, floating park uh, floating national park in the world. So this this is this fact is important. So obviously the biodiversity there is also important. So please remember that. So Sangai is is state animal of Manipur and it is found over there. In, in, in from days so that are floating biomass basically so this is the explanation so it is covered under the schedule one of the wildlife protection act and it is endangered on the IUCN red list so you can see it, it has multiple importance so you you have to cover those species which have multiple importance and they are covered under the different 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 we can say and different uh, uh, protection agreements and acts so they the they work they work on the hint surface of its pastrons and uh, with mincing hops or floating foliage and is hence also called dance, dancing deer. So it is the most uh, uh, this fundi is the most important and unique part of Sangai's habitat. So it is floating mass of intangible vegetation. Basically, fundi is basically floating mass of intangible vegetation formed by the accumulation of organic debris and biomass with soil, and uh, of which the four fifth part is under the water and only one fifth part is above the water. So let's move on to the seventh question. The seventh question is consider the following about the harmful effects of mining and mineral processing. So there are certain harmful effects of mineral processing. You know them. So here we have been asked to to consider that which of the following are correct. First, deforestation deforestation caused due to mining has caused severe land degradation in major major eastern coal belts of India. Second, the dust generated by the limestone processing industry clogs soil pore and uh, that adversely affects the uh, the water infilt infiltration in the soil. So let uh, we have to choose which of the following are the harmful effects. So let me tell you friends that both are the harmful effects of mining because uh, yes they in the in the eastern coal belts of India there is a considerable de uh, degree of deforestation which has adversely affected the land and it has caused land degradation and also there is also the limestone when, when the limestone for processing industry uh, it, it, it releases lot of when, when we crush the limestone it releases lot of dust in atmosphere and when it said this dust settles this affects the uh, uh, this affects the water infiltration capacity of the soil 
so both are correct so both one and two is the answer solution is the c so the the main coal coal uh, coal mining areas are jharkhand chatisgarh madhya pradesh and odisha where the deforestation has taken place due to mining and it has caused severe land degradation and similarly the 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 statement two is also correct so let's move on to your uh, Eighth question. The eighth question is which of the following are characterized by IUCN as vulnerable, endangered, near threatened species as notified by IUCN? So A. Black bluff crocodile and Indian wild ass. B. Lion tail macaw and blue sheep. Uh, C. Himalayan brown bear and wild Asiatic buffalo. D. Desert fox and hornbill. So let me tell you, friends, that blue sheep, blue sheep is new. Is 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 of uh, least concern. So so it is not it is not uh, your uh, under vulnerable, endangered, or near threatened. So so B cannot be the answer. So similarly, the ho uh, desert fox and hornbill are uh, they are rare and uh, they they are rare uh, animals and they are not uh, uh, they they do not fit into any category of vulnerable, endangered, near threatened species. But let me tell you, friends, that the correct answer is A. That is black buck, black buck, crocodile, and Indian wild wild ass. So let's see what is the explanation of uh, this question. So here is A that blue sheep, sheep is a species of least concern. So it is not the answer. And obviously, desert fox and hornbill are rare species. So C is also wrong. Black buck and Indian wild ass are near uh, near, near threatened, while crocodile is vulnerable. So please keep it to keep this in mind. It is important. So uh, this blue uh, this is black 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 buck and Indian wild ass uh, are near threatened. So this this is about your. Uh, uh, it's it's a question. So let's move on to the ninth question. The ninth question is uh, consider the following uh, matches of uh, tiger reserves with the states they are located in. First, Corbett National Park, UP. Uh, second, Mandavgarh National Park, Odisha. Uh, third, Pariyar Tiger Reserve, Kerala. So let me tell you, friends. We have to choose which of the following are correctly matched. So let me tell you that first is clearly wrong because uh, Corbett National Park is basically uh, it is also a national park. It is also a tiger reserve. So it is it is in Uttarakhand, not in UP. So in similar manner, Mandavgarh National Park is wrong. It is not in Odisha. It is in Madhya Madhya Pradesh. Regarding the third, the third is correct. Yes, but your tiger reserve is in Kerala. So the answer would be third only. That is B. Solution is B. So Corbett is located in Uttarakhand and Mandavgarh, Mandavgarh National Park in Madhya Pradesh. Wildlife Sanctuary in Rajasthan and Priya Tiger Reserve in Kerala and Manas Tiger Reserve in Assam. So let's move on to the 10th question that is the last question of today's lecture. Uh, so last, uh, this question is Gadial population in India is declining and, 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 and at threat due to. So Gadial population in India is declining friends and it is under threat. So which of the following are the reasons responsible for it? Uh, first uh, uh, getting entangled, uh, entangled in the fishing nets, second construction of dams and bridges, third egg harvesting for subsistence, subsistence food use, fourth removal of sand from its ha habitat river bank. So we have to choose which of the following are correct. So let me tell you friends that all of the, re uh, of the, uh, of the mentioned reasons are responsible for its declining population in India. So it is now, uh, it is now uh, uh, designated as critically endangered uh, under the IUCN red list. So all of these are responsible. So the solution is uh, all. That is one, two, three, four. The solution is D. So Gadial, with its it has long toothy uh, rostrum and is particularly vulnerable to entanglement in fishing nets due to this. And also they are uh, they are commonly killed and or or, or 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 have their this rostrum chopped off to dis 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 to disentangle nets and perhaps in the retaliation for damaging nets. So they basically damage the nets. Uh, so they 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 this. Uh, this nose type, uh, the, 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 this, this toothy rostrum. So that's why in retaliation they, they are killed. So statement two is uh, our friends uh, also correct because dams, bridges, and water abstraction they have adversely affected uh, their, their habitat and also may have may have uh, made the, their uh, their habitats unsuitable for living. So also egg harvesting for poor subsistence by the riparian people. Uh, residents is responsible for the decline in population and also sustained new mining activity and destroying of the crucial nesting and uh, and uh, and basking sites so so they they are also uh, 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 are responsible for their decrease in population so this is all about friends today's lecture if you like the questions please like the uh, please like the video share it with your friends and uh, lastly friends uh, if you let me tell you if you want to subscribe to the pdfs of these mcqs then you can whatsapp us at this number that is eight nine six eight four two six four eight one. so this is our contact number so obviously we will be char charging certain amount for the pdfs because uh, we are putting in lot of effort so we will, we will charge up for 
for the purpose of uh, our sustainability because if we if we don't charge uh, a certain amount then it is it becomes difficult for us also to sustain uh, our activities so uh, for, for the purpose of our motivation we are charging somewhat so in in case you want to join to the pdf you can want to get the pdf then you can do whatsapp us at this number that is eight nine six eight four two six four eight one so friends why these pdfs are important because at the end of the day you will not be able to revise the whole syllabus uh, by seeing 20 to 25 minute long videos or by 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 reading the uh, standard books or for that matter ncrt is because at the end of the day when your exam will be near you will have to revise multiple things and you can't read standard books at that time or ncrt is because time doesn't allow you and also you can't see long videos for that purpose you must have some kind of notes from which you can revise quickly so this question answer format or the pdfs are best for your revision purpose because they comprehensively cover your syllabus they comprehensively cover your important topics and uh, and in this way you also revise the uh, the syllabus and uh, and this helps you to helps you to revise the syllabus in an interesting manner because you do not get bored when you read these pdfs because first you see the question and then you go for its solution and then if solution is wrong then you go for its explanation so in this way you cover multiple concepts in in one question only so because i have in each question it is it is told that why a particular option is correct and why others are not correct and in which context they will be correct so this helps in a revision in quick manner and obviously the uh, four five time revision is necessary for before appearing in the prelims uh, so it is important to revise the important uh, the, the all the concepts uh, so this these pdfs will 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 help you at the end of the day so if you want to subscribe to them then you can do whatsapp us at this number that is eight nine six eight four two six four eight one so friends this is all about today's video if you liked it like it and uh, please uh, subscribe to our channel and also do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the important notification relating to upsc cac 2019 that we uh, that we will do on our uh, on our youtube channel that is gy so this is all about today's video thank you friends have a nice day